Hi everyone, I'm Michai here. In today's video, we're going to add authentication to our application. We're going to learn it from a technical point of view. So we'll look at each one of the methods that we're going to call and understand what it really does behind the scenes and how the magic that we get from the framework actually works. Okay, so what we have at the moment is we set up our project to generate JW tokens when the user logs in. And here's an example to it of a token that we know how to return. So we are the issuer and the audience, and we have an expiration and some other details that we populated. Um, we're using the HMAC SHA-256 algorithm to sign the token, and our actual secret that we're using to sign the token is this string over here, which is exactly 16 bytes, what we need for our algorithm. And so, like we said, if we were looking at the flow, then to generate the token, then we call the login endpoint and we pass an email and a password. And in the response, we get a token that now we can use to authenticate against our system. Now, what we're going to be adding today is we're going to add the dinners endpoint, which for now will simply return an empty list of dinners because we didn't talk about how this is modeled yet. I want to cover some domain driven design principles beforehand. And here we'll specify the token and only authenticated users will be able to get a response. Now, what you'll usually have is two separate systems. One system, that's your identity provider, for example, AAD, that, that they'll generate the token. And then the backend system will have to do some back and forth to get the public key of the private key that was used to sign the token to validate the signature. But in our case, since we're also the identity provider and also the system, so we can simply use a symmetric key and that's what we're doing in our implementation, but it's more about understanding the concept and how things are wired together behind the scenes. Okay, so let's look at the code and get started. Okay, so I have our application opened in Visual Studio Code, and I want us to first add the dinners controller, which we'll only want to call as authenticated users. So for that in the API project, let's create a new controller. Let's call it dinners controller. Right, so public class dinners controller. This will inherit from the API controller, which is simply our base controller, right? Inherits from the controller base and has the API controller attribute. Let's give it the route, which is simply controller. And let's put here the single endpoint that we talked about. So public action result list dinners. And like we said, for now, we'll simply return an empty list. So array.empty and let's say string, string, like so. Great. Let's add here HTTP get. Okay, so of course, for now, anyone can call this endpoint. We want to add authentication. But for that, I want us to put a breakpoint over here. Look what we have at the moment and then see what we want to tamper with. So I'm putting a breakpoint over here and let's run the service the API project. In the requests folder, let's create a new folder. It's called dinners. And over here, let's create our list dinners request, which will be somewhat like one of these, but it'll be HTTP get and dinners. Great. Now let's attach the debugger. So over dinner, debugger is attached let's make the request and we hit the breakpoint and i want us to look at the http context and look at the user property which internally has the identity property and you can see over here we have is authenticated false and you can see that there could actually be more than one identity but what we care about at the moment is that the is authenticated is false and also that we don't have any claims. Okay, now the process of authentication, if we look at it simplistically from a technical point of view, it's populating this thing over here with the correct details that are that are corresponds to the user based on the token that he supplied or that he made the request with. So that's what we want to do now. And the way this works is as following. So I'm going to stop the application and I want us to look at the program CS. Okay, so over here we have our request pipeline and we're going to add a new middleware called use authentication. This will add the authentication middleware 
that what it'll do, it'll look at the arriving request, it'll look at the authorization header, and then it'll invoke the correct authentication handler, which will take the token, say if the user is authenticated, and also it'll extract various details, etc. So let's start writing some code and let's understand it as we go. So over here, let's add the use authentication middleware. Now this internally uses different objects that we haven't added to the dependency injection IOC container. So let's go ahead and add it now. So in the infrastructure project, we have over here our existing token related configurations, right? Where we're generating the token. Let's add also the authentication logic. So to make this a bit more organized, let's create a new method. Let's call it add auth. 1h and let's move the auth logic over there so we have these two lines over here let's just call them so let's say over here services dot add auth and pass it the configuration like so now over here let's actually configure a few things First of all, let's add the dependencies that the authentication middleware needs. And also let's define what do we actually want to validate in the token. So the way this looks is as following services dot authentication. This will add the dependencies that we talked about. We also want to specify here what the default authentication scheme is. In our case, it's JWT bearer. So let's say default scheme is JWT bearer bearer defaults and this isn't recognized let's find where this belongs to so reverse package search and this is the correct package so let's add it so dotnet add to the infrastructure project the package microsoft dot spnet core dot authentication let's see if we can complete yes jwt bearer great Now that we have that, let's add the using statement. And let's say here, authentication scheme, which if we look at this, this is simply the string bearer. And what this add authentication method does is other than adding the dependencies, it also returns the authentication builder, right? Let's see that I'm not getting the name wrong. Yes, the authentication builder, which internally has a map between the authentication scheme and the corresponding authentication handler. And what we want to do is to add the JWT bearer handler as the authentication handler for the JWT bearer, for the bearer authentication scheme. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So add JWT bearer. And over here, we can pass whatever um, we want to actually validate. So in our case, let's say options, options dot token validation parameters. And let's walk through. Yes, this seems right. Let's just include what we need to include. Okay, so what we're doing over here, let's close the terminal so there's a bit more room. What we're doing over here is as following. So like we said, there is the actual um, authentication handler, which validates the token, makes sure the token is legit and populates the identity of the user. And what we're saying over here is basically we're passing the parameters that we want to validate. So in our case, we want to validate the issuer and the audience, and we're passing what we define as valid issuer and audience. Also, we want to make sure that the expiration date is in the future. And also we pass it the signing key. So the handler, it actually calls a different component, which does the validation, but that the other component knows how to actually validate the signature of the token. And um, that's it. Okay, so this obviously doesn't exist. So it's not recognized. Now the configuration that we have over here when creating the token is the same one that we're using over here. All right. So if you remember, we have over here in the app settings, the JWT um, settings section, right, which has over here the definition of what we're using. Now because we're going to reuse it. So let's extract it to a local variable. Let's say JWT settings equals new JWT settings. Yes, let's bind the values. So configuration. Yes, only want to give it 
the section name. Great. Now, instead of adding this like so, so if you remember, this uses the options pattern to register the JWT settings, right? I options with the type of JWT settings. So instead, what we're going to do, because we already have the object over here, we can say add singleton. And over here, we can say um, options. This one, yes, dot create and pass it the JWT settings. And now these three lines is similar to the configure method. It's the same thing, just a more verbose way to say it. And now we have the JWT settings, which we can reuse below, All right? So let's see what we're missing over here. Did I get this wrong? Okay. Now let's use it over here as well. So the issuer is us and the audience also comes from this object. Let's add here, yes, system text. And over here, the key itself is under the JWT settings. JWT settings. Ah, it's capital, that's why. Let's change this to a non-capital J. And let's say secret. Perfect. That's it. Let's simply return from here the uh, services. As so, yes. And uh, this should be it for now. So let's run the service again. And make the listener's request again. I want, we still have the breakpoint in the controller. I want us to now look at the HTTP context and see what we have now. So the service is running. I'm connecting the debugger. And let's make the request. We hit the breakpoint in the dinner's controller. And again, we're looking at the HTTP context at the user and then at the identity. And as we can see, the is authenticated is still false. Now the question is, why is it still false? And the answer is because we're still not passing a token with the request. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's first of all, continue. And let's make a register request. Let's take the token that we get over here and put it over here in the authorization header. So let's say authorization and let's say bearer and let's paste the token. Now let's make the request again. We hit the breakpoint and now if we look at the HTTP context under user, under identity, and now we can see a few things. First of all, is authenticated is true. And in the claims, we can see that we successfully decoded the token, validated it, and then the claims were populated under the claims property. So you might be asking yourself, how did the previous request work without us passing a valid token? And the answer is that what we set up is only the authentication, the process of deciding if a user can access a specific endpoint based on some policy is the authorization process. So let's go ahead and add authorization. So let's say the following. First of all, let's stop the service and go to the program CS. Let's also make this a bit smaller. Okay, so when we call add presentation, this internally calls the add controllers, which calls the add authorization for us. So we don't need to explicitly add the dependencies for the authorization middleware. That's because it was already added for us. But what we do need to do is the following is say over here, app dot use authorization. This will actually add the authorization middleware. Okay, so I want to visualize this. So again, we have our request pipeline. And somewhere in the middle, we hit our authentication middleware, the authentication middleware finds the correct a authentication handler that knows how to handle the bearer authentication scheme. In our case, it's the JWT bearer handler, right? So it calls this handler and it gets um, the whether or not the user is authenticated, the claims and so on. That's where the actual validation of the token happens. Now that we have these values, we call it the next piece of middleware, which is the authorization middleware. The authorization middleware will decide if the user can actually access the endpoint. Okay, now for that, what we want to do is we want to go back to our controller. And we want to add the authorize attribute. And now when we have two of these, what will happen is that the authorization middleware, by default, it has a default policy when we simply call add presentation, add controllers, and 
add authorization. This, by default, adds a policy that requires the user to be authenticated. So we don't have to do anything other than add the authorized attribute, which will use the default policy that requires the user to be authenticated. So now that we have this, we can run the project again, make a request with an invalid token. So let's corrupt it. I changed the E to an A. And now that we make the request, then we get 401 um, unauthorized. And that's because of the authorized attribute and the authorization middleware. Now, if we pass a legit token, so I'm making a request, taking the token from the register request, pasting it over here, making the request again, and we can see that now we get uh, the response. So we have been authenticated successfully. Okay, back in our DIMS controller, another thing that would make sense to do is to move the authorized attribute to the API controller, right, to our base controller. So it's applied to all of our controllers by default. So for that, let's take the attribute and move it over here. Now we can get rid of this using statement and it's applied over here, but it'll also be applied in our authentication controller, which also inherits from the API controller. And now users won't be able to register or log in because they'll have to be authenticated to do so. So for that, if we still want to allow unauthenticated users to access the endpoints, then we can say for this entire controller, um, then we allow anonymous. And as you would expect in the authorization middleware, there's a logic that says, is there the allow anonymous attribute? If yes, then all good, you can continue to the endpoint. Okay, so just to recap, what we have is the use authentication and use authorization middlewares. We have the use authentication, which will try to resolve what the identity of the user is, and the use authorization, which will check if the user can actually access the endpoint. The default authorization uh, policy, it requires the user to be authenticated. And what it actually does is it checks the property that we looked at in the HTTP context. Uh, and to wire things up, then in the dependency injection of the infrastructure layer, then we simply added this, where over here we passed details that the JWT bearer authentication handler will use to actually validate the token. And that's it. That's it for this video. I really hope you have a better understanding of the topics that we talked about. In the future videos, we finally have a lot of the initial project infrastructure out of the way, and we can start talking about domain-driven design principles and terminology and understand how we actually want to model our system, what the behaviors are, what different contexts are in our system. So if that sounds intriguing, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.